My name is Ryan from the Business Journal. I'd like to thank all of our attendees for being here today. We have a really awesome webinar planned with our partners from ECMSI, um, focusing on cybersecurity, what you need to know to keep your business safe. Um, they've got really great experts on their team. And Ralph, you can kick it off. All right. Thanks, Ryan. We appreciate everything you're doing, too, with the Business Journal and our partnership that we've worked with you guys. So appreciate you spending the time putting this together. And like Ryan said, um, we're uh, talking about, you know, what you need to know to keep your business safe. So I'll do some uh, brief introductions here um, of the panel that's here so you know who you're talking to when you have questions. My name is Ralph Blanco. I'm the owner and CEO of ECMSI. My name's Nate Baer. I've been with ECMSI for going on five years now, and I am the security team lead. My name's Kyle Forward. I've uh, got about 25 years experience in IT. I've uh, been with ECMSI now for four years as the NOC or Network Operations Center team lead. Uh, hi, I'm Dave Galliotto. I'm the CIO here at ECMSI. I've been here for 21 years now. I'm Shane Nesbitt. Been with the company around five years. I am the sales manager here at ECMSI. All right. With that being said, yeah, a little bit about ECMSI. We've been in uh, business for over 23 years. Uh, we have over 200 years of IT and security expertise. Uh, we have 30 plus uh, skilled IT sports team, team and staff, and we're growing continuously. I have over 12 years of project management, and we're proud to say that our retention rate is over 97%. And uh, we market that on an average of uh, that will work on your issues uh, on an average of 19 minutes or less. Um, you know, our goal at the end of the day is to focus on IT and build a strategy for our partners to make sure that they could just focus on growing their business. Uh, a couple other things here. Uh, we, we focus on IT managed services. You know, we're 24 by 7 by 365 of support. Uh, we were very proactive and we uh, monitor your network. Uh, we over the last Five years we've been dedicating to advanced security because of the, the threat landscape has changed over time. Um, so that's a big piece. Cloud services, we work with each individual partner. Uh, obviously there's a, a cloud strategy in, in every business. So we just wanna make sure and um, uh, that we provide the, the best strategy for our partners. Sometimes it's on, on site, sometimes it's in the cloud. So it really depends on the situation. Uh, and we also provide for our partners, if they are partner of ours, voice over IP services. All right, so basically what you'll learn this, uh, what we'll go over is some cybersecurity basics, some facts, some commonly used terms, you know, the impact of cybersecurity, how to protect yourself. Uh, we'll dabble into some of the advanced security offerings um, and what does an IT strategy look like uh, and why do you need an IT strategy? And we'll, it's, it's basically a business conversation that we'll talk about, you know, what that looks like for every partner that's out there or every business that's out there should be looking at, so. Uh, I'll pass this over to Nate. He's going to talk of just some general uh, terminology here just to get everybody familiar. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about these terms. Um, I'll let him go from here. Yeah, thanks, Ralph. Uh, all right, what is cybersecurity? It is the practice of protecting critical systems and sensitive information from digital attacks. <laughs> Why is cybersecurity important? We're becoming more reliant on cyber infrastructures, which makes businesses and personal information alike more vulnerable to cyber attacks. As the most disruptive to economic growth, cyber threats are posing more damage to business, government, and other infrastructural assets. Who needs cybersecurity? While some industries are more vulnerable than others due to the nature of their business and the sensitive information they keep, all organizations should have cybersecurity measures in place to protect their business, their employees, and the individuals they serve. There's some general ter terminology Nate's going to go over. Yep. We'll go over this. We'll read it word by word, and we're going to add some lib here and there on certain points of these. So a cyber attack is a malicious and deliberate attack to breach the information system of another individual or organization. A threat actor is an individual or a group posing as a threat. A hacker is an unauthorized user who attempts to or gains access to an information system. A breach is an incident where information is stolen or taken from a system without the knowledge or authorization of the system's owner. 
A firewall is an internetwork connection device that restricts data communication traffic between two connected networks. A virus is a computer program that can copy itself and infect a computer without permission or knowledge of the user. Uh, it's different than malware, which is hardware, firmware, or software that is intentionally included or inserted in a system for a harmful purpose. Uh, malware would be more along the lines of uh, a key logger or something that collects data from the end user um, as they're typing. Um, malware can uh, disguise itself as legitimate programs um, in order to capture information. Uh, with ransomware, which is a big buzzword nowadays, it's a, it's a form of malware designed to encrypt files on a device, rendering any files and the system that relies on them unusable. Uh, typically with ransomware, you'll see an entire network get encrypted, and then um, after the end of the encryption is done, a little pop-up will appear asking for Bitcoin or asking for uh, you know anonymous funds be sent to the attacker. Uh, with phishing, uh, it's a technique for attempting to acquire sensitive data through fraudulent solicitation in which the perpetrator masquerades as a legitimate business or reputable person. Uh, we get we see phishing attempts all the time. Um, a Gmail account will disguise itself as the CEO of a company, and it'll start to send emails out to the, the various employees asking for, uh, you know, either certain personal information, uh, maybe credentials. It'll ask them, um, hey, can you give me a call at this number? Um, get your credit card ready. Um, they'll try and, you know, they'll, they'll try to rip off the employee. Um, and then lastly, we have social engineering, uh, which is an attempt to trick someone into revealing information that can be used to attack systems or networks. Um, a big one I'd like to reference was the, the 2020 Twitter hack, where over 130 accounts got compromised, um, which includes like Barack Obama, Jeff Bezos, um, uh, Gates, Bill Gates. Um, and it was all done because a 17-year-old in Florida decided to call around um, to the remote employees at Twitter. Um, this was shortly after COVID had hit, so everyone was re working remotely, and they were able to use some social engineering techniques to say, hey, I'm your IT company, um, you know, yeah, we need to work on a ticket for you, uh, tell me what your username and password is, and from there they were able to get in and um, basically hack Twitter. Um, and again, that was a 17-year-old in Florida against a multi-billion dollar organization, so no one is above um, these type of attacks. Yep, and they're getting very good at uh, the social engineering aspects. Obviously, there's big money to be made on there, so we're seeing more and more of that. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about layered security and how do you protect yourself uh, on some of this stuff in a little bit here. So, um, And this, I'll pass this over to uh, Shane. He's our, our sales manager, and uh, talk a little bit about this slide here. Um, yeah, economic impacts since uh, 2020 stats show about 55% of all small to medium sized businesses have had some sort of data breach. The economic impact on companies include loss of money, downtime, and disruption of day to day business, up to and including business closure. And without an IT strategy, is it really worth the risk um, not implementing uh, some sort of uh, IT strategy? The reputation impact. Um, cyber attacks have crippled companies' reputation to include lots of sales, relationships with their clients and vendors, shareholders, and community. Without an IT strategy, business will continue to hurt the reputation in some instances, recover financially, and client retention. Um, regulatory uh, impacts, companies' failure to deploy reliable security measures are seeing legal proceedings up to financial penalties and closure. We have also seen an increase of insurance companies not endorsing cyber insurance policies or capping them at a real low value. Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of different things uh, out in the field. 
Yeah, there's a lot of things that impact, obviously, the um, the economic impact, just a loss of uh, productivity um, during downtime and, sure. and not having a good disaster recovery strategy. We've seen companies be, uh, have been down for you know weeks and even months, and, and I don't even know how they sustain some of that. But there's a lot of economic impacts. You know, if you do get breached and you're under a regulatory uh, obligation, um, you're, you're going to have to, you know, uh, spend a lot of money on marketing to reach out to your current customers and make sure they understand that they got breached. So there's a lot of other third party costs that come along with um, a cyber attack. So, um, so how do you begin uh, protecting yourself? I have uh, Dave, our uh, CIO here, he's been with me 20 years, talk a little bit about this. Sure. So that's a lot of information we just gave everybody. So it probably sounds scary. Um, <laughs> Here's a few things we could do fairly simple to start protecting ourselves. This isn't the be all end all of everything, but these are some things that everybody can do to try to protect themselves a little bit. Um, number one is just limit what you put on the internet. You know, we're all on social media now. Uh, be careful what you're posting on Facebook. The social engineering and hackers are, they're looking through that stuff, looking for information, trying to figure out, you know, passwords and different things like that. Uh, you know, as, a, as an IT systems, you want to keep your applications up to date. You want to keep your, your, your operating systems patched. Uh, that's probably a thing you guys hear a lot from us IT guys is we have to patch it. Um, it's because we're trying to keep you guys secure. Um, strong passwords. Uh, in addition to this, uh, MFA or multi-factor authentication, or you may hear it called 2FA, two-factor authentication, especially on email. Uh, you know, this is it's where a lot of breaches start. So, uh, you know, good, strong passwords are really key. Good, good security there. Uh, you know, you know, we run into a lot of uh, five, six character passwords. You know, I, I, we try to get everybody into like a 15 character password, which is, I know, a little long, but, you know, you want to get a little longer there um, for security. Um, as far as the Internet, you want to make sure you're using a secure Internet connection. You know, don't go do your banking at uh, Panera or McDonald's or free Wi-Fi or anything like that. Use, you know, use a secure Wi-Fi network that you know is secure. Um, you know, don't share passwords, pins, information like that. Uh, should go without saying, but... Uh, I have to say it. Um, <laughs> you want to keep an eye on your 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 you know account statements, uh, credit reports, different things like that because you you know things will change in the background and sometimes you won't notice it for six eight months. So you want to keep an eye on those things on a regular basis. There's services out there that will monitor that for you. Um, and then you want to be very vigilant when you with texts and emails and clicking on links that people send you. Um, you know, that's a good attack vector. They'll they'll send a malicious link that looks pretty normal. It looks like it didn't do anything, and turns out it's embedded some piece of software on your computer that's gathering data and sending it off to them and you know without the proper security in place so uh just be vigilant and, and you know if you're not expecting something don't click on it you know yeah i mean there's just and, and education you know if you're if you're a business owner or um a manager make sure you're, you're looking at your educational strategy for your for your end users you know, we always talk about um, you know, from we talk to our accounting firms and, and people who do accounting, make sure if somebody's requesting to change a routing number um, that you're picking up the call uh, phone and you're, you're, you're giving them a call and you're talking to them about, you know, uh, is it legitimately them? Don't don't call the number that's on the email. If it's QuickBooks, look up QuickBooks website, call them from, you know, the QuickBooks number that's there. Um, obviously most companies will never ask you for passwords, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's a, a key flag to make sure you don't put your, your passwords in those, those types of sites. So just, just educate your staff and, and there's different training options out there for them to uh, continue to understand what's coming down the road. So, um, some of the ECMSI, uh, advanced, uh, security stuff, um, you know, it, to be the most effective securing your network requires, uh, to be very proactive. Um, you know, we feel we, we offer the leading uh, advanced security services to keep your business proactive, uh, profitable and, and, and um, positioned for growth. So but it really it, it starts with um, layered security. And I'll have Nate talk about a little bit about what that looks like and what does that mean? Because there is unfortunately there is no one fixed thing to protect yourself. So you have to. Uh, so we'll have Nate and Kyle both talk a little bit about. Uh, what layer security looks like. So, yeah, so <clears throat> probably the, the key layer, uh, the very top layer you see here, network monitoring and management. Um, so the network infrastructure is pretty much where all that malicious traffic is going to traverse. It's going to pass through, you know, we, we can uh, go back and talk about that secure internet connection again. And the network monitoring, this is all part of that. We monitor to make sure that that connection maintains uh, that level of security and uh, that level of protection. Okay. Yeah, for, 
for virus and malware protection, um, you, you'll see a, a lot nowadays. Uh, EDR is one of those big buzzwords that are going around. Um, it's seen on multiple insurance forms when you're filing for PCI compliance. Um, ECMSI offers what's called XDR, um, which is extended disaster recovery. Um, EDR just stands for endpoint disaster recovery. Um, it, extended disaster recovery includes EDR, but it goes a little bit further. Uh, not only are we supplying a product that looks at all the programs on your computer to make sure nothing malicious is occurring, but the same agent is capable of looking at the surrounding network. Um, and it, it's there to detect um, anomalies in the network. So let's say uh, a rogue computer gets connected to the network. Um, and it's trying to perform an attack on the network, like a man in the middle attack. Our XDR product is capable of detecting that and reporting it to us. And we can essentially lock it down from there. Um, going into backup and disaster recovery. Uh, at the very end of the our multiple layers of security, we have um, strong backups and it's something we feel every IT company should have. And it's a conversation that um, if your IT company uh, or you should have with your IT company to make sure that you guys have in place a, a strong uh, backup plan, backup solution. And not only is your data getting backed up, but also asking the questions, well, what happens if we do get hacked, um, what happens if ransomware does occur? How long is it going to take to get all of our stuff up and working? And then with spam and content filtering, um, we offer uh, a spam filtering service uh, in order to cut back on all the the spam, but also the, the phishing email attacks that occur. Um, as well as content filtering to where we're we can actively block um, end users from going out to potentially malicious websites. Um, we've seen park domains. Um, we've seen uh, domains that are just sitting out there. Um, that newly are, formed. Yeah, newly formed domains are a big one uh, that we've seen nowadays where uh, an attacker will register a domain day one with the sole purpose of using it for you know bad guy purposes um trying to send a malicious email to someone get them to click on a link and they'll take them to that bad website um where they can either try and drop a file onto the computer or it'll ask for certain user credentials maybe that domain is set up to look just like microsoft's um, home page where it'll say, you know, Microsoft with a username and password field. And it'll, you know, it'll prompt you just like you normally would to sign into Microsoft uh, 365. Um, patch management. Uh, Kyle, this, uh, would you like to talk about that piece? Sure. Yeah. Another uh, big part of this is the patch management, as uh, Dave had mentioned earlier. Uh, again, this falls back to that very top element, that network monitoring. We monitor to make sure that systems are up to date on their patches. Uh, having those patches installed, especially to address zero day vulnerabilities, um, it's very important to make sure that, that the patches are installed in a timely manner um, so that uh, you, you can uh, protect yourself from those vulnerabilities. Yeah, and just to touch upon that, the, the zero day vulnerability, as the name suggests, it's it's a vulnerability that comes out that very same day. Um, and so let's say, you know, this week, a uh, vulnerability comes out in Windows 10. Um, you don't want your workstation sitting out there for three months without the patch for that vulnerability. Um, it's just not good security practice. Uh, going into dark web monitoring, uh, everyone's heard the term dark web before. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a browser service um, that uh, anonymous data is shared um, on the dark web. So what ends up happening is it, during a breach, um, credentials get leaked and those credentials then get bought and sold on the dark web. And we offer a service that basically spider webs the whole internet, including the dark web, and looks at uh, popular auction shops and different forms for uh, your email accounts and your user credentials. And if it detects one of those, um, it reports back to us to let us know that, hey, there's a good chance this person's account was compromised. Um, this is what they have. And some of the auction sites will say, okay, we have this person's username, 
their password, their work number, their personal phone number, their personal cell number, um, their personal email account. And luckily, uh, this service uh, goes in and it'll look at all that and report back to us. And then we basically just have a, a conversation with the end user and say, hey, this is what our service found. You're going to want to change your password in these different areas. <clears throat> And then for the, the SIM and SOC services, uh, to briefly go over SIM, uh, we offer um, an intrusion detection system that also does log aggregation. <clears throat> so the intrusion detection system as just another piece of layered security, uh, it sits there and its sole function is to analyze the network for suspicious activity. So if it's something, let's say our XDR product doesn't catch, um, then we have a, another backup piece where it's actively looking at the network for um, anything that it could deem malicious 24-7, uh, and then it reports back to us. And then Kyle, and if you would briefly talk about SOC services. Yeah, and the SOC, you know, SOC and NOC, those are two acronyms, again, you know, that are quite popular. So the SOC is Security Operations Center. That is essentially a facility uh, that is staffed by uh, technicians 24-7, 365. Uh, our current SIM solution does have the SOC behind it, plus we also have our own security team here that, uh, that will react to those escalated events that are detected through the SIM solution. Network Operations Center uh, goes back to that top element again, that network monitoring and management. Uh, constantly watching and monitoring the network 24-7, 365. We have our own in-house knock here, uh, but I feel we have a pretty strong team that, that handles that. Yeah, and then going back to a lot of the stuff is you're going to see driven by the insurance company. Again, the insurance companies are tired of um, having companies fill out questionnaires and saying they're doing stuff that they're, you know, that they're not sure they're not doing and, and they're just marking it to get a discounted price. But the insurance companies have been paying out. You've seen a lot of breaches over the past. You know, you're seeing a lot of the bigger companies get breached, but I promise you it's the smaller companies that are actually more vulnerable. They just don't make the news. Um, so that's that's driving a lot of this. Um, stuff. So uh, as far as layer security, it's great to have all those tools, uh, but there's, there's definitely much more to, you know, preparing our partners. Um, we went over all those layered security parts, but training is a big piece and educating the staff and, and making them understand and aware of what's out there, um, what to look for. And, uh, you know, so, you know, obviously we have an internal knock and security team that helps protect our partners and uh, you, you have to create a, every business needs to have some type of strategy roadmap, um, to help them, you know, f develop their plan for the future and to make sure they're, they're doing the right things to protect their, their client information, their, their, their own data, their own business. Um, one thing we do provide with our partners is a quarterly business review with our VCIO services. We just sit down it's a business conversation, talk about what's coming up, what's out there. Uh, help them do budgeting, make sure that they are planning for the future, just to, again, um, be less reactive and be more proactive and, and, and set up the plan for long term. So the more proactive you could be, obviously, we feel that the, the better protected you'll be and uh, the, 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 the less chance that you're going to have any downtime. So and again, we just want to make sure we protect our uh, you should be protecting your business and your critical data. So um, IT strategy, uh, I'll let Dave talk a little bit about this. Um, what is an IT strategy? <clears throat> uh, an IT strategy defines your IT vision and is going to create a strong strategic roadmap for information technology, digital assets, and technical knowledge for your business. Uh, that's done through us, through our VCIS service, like uh, Ralph had just mentioned. Uh, we'll work with you uh, to, to think beyond the day-to-day -day of your IT and how do we align our, our processes and what we do with your business to meet your, your business goals, uh, your IT goals, and keep everything aligned. Um, the biggest key to, to note with a, a strategy is a, a successful IT strategy isn't a one-time thing. It's, it's reviewed and revisited regularly. Uh, we recommend quarterly. That's part of our VCIO, uh, where we'll review that roadmap with you and make sure that we're all on track to go the same place and everybody's rowing in the same direction. Um, so that's where the importance of a strategy or why you want a strategy. Yep. Know what strategy is. Yeah. Um, and why do you need an IT strategy? Um, you know, you want to make sure you're you're leveraging the te technology to the fullest, and I'll let Dave uh, finish this sure. off. But 
Yeah, uh, leveraging your technology to the fullest, um, it's going to give you a differentiator of your comp competition. Uh, you know, most of your competitors probably don't have any sort of strategy to improve their business through technology. Uh, you know, it's going to ensure you're meeting and driving your business needs, uh, which are obviously critical to keep growing your business. Uh, continue to process, uh, provide continuous assessment and monitoring that, you know, our knock and sock teams are always on the back end looking for where do we need to improve and communicating, and that gets put onto your roadmaps. Um, and then provide proactive and emergency uh, change response. You know, you try to be as proactive as you can, and we try to get that in, in going. So we don't have the emergency response, but every once in a while, you're still going to have an emergency, and, and we're we're here to plan for that and help you with that and make sure you're prepared for that. Yep. And and one last thing we want to um, talk about is you know we doing because there's unfortunately even companies that have internal IT they have needs to you know um, so we put together a, a co-managed partnership with you know one of our first companies been with us over 20 years we I installed their first server and they have now they have 30 plus servers they have five internal IT and we still help manage their security and their infrastructure because the dynamics have changed so it's it's very difficult for companies even when they're big enough to have a, a internal IT staff to handle everything that's coming in. We're constantly looking for our partners, what's best in class and being very proactive. Uh, so, you know, there's some real benefits for uh, our partners that have internal IT to partner with us. Obviously we, we help them around the clock and we, we provide um, expertise on issues. And, we, and basically we bolt on like a, a staff of 30 onto their staff with our, our team. So hopefully help create efficiencies. At the end of the day, we want to make them the heroes of their network. We just want to be there to help support them. Um, we think that we could help them, um, you know, uh, understand their costs and and really uh, partner with them for the advanced security piece of it. So um, that Brian, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions that came in. Uh, again, a lot of this has been driven with the the landscape change over the years, and it's continuing to get um, complex and. Uh, the good thing is, you know, we're, we're continuously to work with our partners and trying to give them a strategy. I'm hoping people who listen, if they don't use us to understand that they need to put together an IT strategy. And these are some of the things to be aware of and, you know, stay as proactive as possible because, you know, the dynamics of IT is changing constantly. And the, the real expense is downtime um, for companies. So. Absolutely. Um, I I don't see any questions from the audience, but I, I did take a few notes on a, a few things that I wanted to ask, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay, um, so I, I had spoken previously with you guys a little bit about um, a knock and a security team. Could you just go into a little more detail about what the difference is? Sure, sure. Uh, we have both guys here from our knock and our security team. So uh, explain, you wanna explain what, the, uh, what you sure. do at the knock? <laughs> so the network operations center is uh, uh, referring back to that previous slide. Uh, that's that's essentially like a top level element. Um, that network operations center, uh, center. There's various aspects that we monitor on every endpoint uh, workstations. We have a standard template that we look at certain things on those endpoints, servers especially. Uh, critical services. We want to make sure that we know that those are always running. We want to know that patches are always up to date. Um, it's that that level of monitoring at the network operations center that uh, essentially could uh, lead to an investigation that that opens up potentially a can of worms, hopefully not. Right. And that's, that's a, that's a, you know, that's, that's one thing I'd say we're most proud of is that a lot of IT companies, because it, it's the staffing, uh, the challenging of staffing and stuff is that we staff our own knock and we're growing that to me, that, that's the very important piece. And that's the, you know, uh, that and the security uh, the team, those two components to us, you know, are the most important areas that I feel that we're growing. Uh, again, I think other companies are outsourcing that because of cost, but I think it's just too important for our customers uh, to make sure that we're on top of that stuff and we're providing a, you know, a U.S. based service. But it's um, also that personal relationship that we're able to provide, whereas an right. outsource knock, you may not get that personalization. Right. So we're able to control a lot from there and, and do what's, you know, we feel best in class. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, Nate could talk a little bit about the security team, um, but th that, that's, that's doing 
all those layers of security that we talked about. That's what they're managing and they're they're monitoring. Again, Nate said this before with uh, disaster recovery. You know, it's it's easy to back up data. That's 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 cheap. It's really the conversation you should be having with your IT provider or your internal IT is if something happens and you got to go. There's obviously different levels of disaster. Um, you have the conversation, how long would it take for us to get back up and running? I know local businesses, we've heard in the area, sometimes they're down for a week, two weeks. I don't even know how they sustain to be down that long, but, uh, but they, you know, they have their data, but it's, it's taking them a while to recover and get back. So those are the, I, I feel those are the conversations, business conversations that are important to happen before the incident actually happens. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, to add to that, um, yeah, the Security Operations Center, we deal with rolling out the advanced security piece. So setting up multi-factor authentication, uh, setting up disk encryption, um, uh, making sure that uh, uh, the XDR product is installed on every device. Um, we manage response um, for uh, threat level intelligence. So as a device uh, were to report in that something had occurred on it that could be potentially malicious, uh, let's say our XDR product blocked something on there, we would go in and we investigate to see, all right, where did this come from? How did it get there? Who clicked on what? Um, is it on any other devices? Uh, how do we go about removing it if our XDR product didn't already remove it, um, et cetera? And then uh, we get, <laughs> we mostly end up asking the, the question, what if? Um, and this goes back to disaster recovery as well. Uh, in the layered security mindset, we have to ask, what if somebody does get through a firewall? What if somebody does bypass multi-factor authentication? What if our XDR product fails to detect this new virus that's out there? Um, we have to have contingencies and contingencies for our contingencies. And that's where the whole layered security piece comes into play. So as the NOC is setting up uh, device monitoring and they're setting up automation and things of that level. monitoring. Yeah, yeah, infrastructure monitoring, things at that level. The, the Security Operations Center is designed to develop a plan to really secure um, the networks that we manage. Great. Thank you for the, uh, the more detail on that. Um, I, kind of pivoting a little bit, we've talked a lot about digital infrastructure and um, you know, cybersecurity and things like that. Are there hardware concerns that businesses should be aware about? Or is that something that really they don't need to worry themselves too much about? Well, and I'll let Nate run with this, but you know, as far as hardware goes, you know, a lot of times customers, you know, they have a router that's working, a business grade router. Um, they don't monitor it; it's working, it's providing internet service to them, but they're they're not receiving patches or security or updates. Yes, yeah. firmware could be out of date. So those are big security holes. Yeah, the stuff's working. You know, people usually only look at stuff when it's broken and it's not working, but that doesn't mean it's you know. It, it, it position to be in your best interest when it's like that. So, um, but Nate, yeah, I'll let you talk a little bit about the, the hardware. Yeah. On there, so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that can sometimes go um, overlooked in a, uh, is in a business environment. Uh, things such as printers, um, smart devices. Um, we, we've heard of the term uh, IOT, internet of things. Um, those devices work off of firmware and firmware is just software that integrates with hardware for lack of a better term. Um, and firmware can go outdated. Um, these developers find vulnerabilities in their software and they push patches out for them. Um, sometimes the hardware uh, is just no longer supported. So if the hardware isn't supported and you no longer have a vendor pushing updates out to, this, to the hardware, then we're talking a, a bigger security concern because now no one's patching any vulnerabilities that come out. So keeping up to date with hardware requirements and making sure that your, your stuff is still being supported and that the stuff that is being supported is getting patched, um, it, it's, it's essential to security. Yeah, and a challenge we run into too, Ryan, is that you know everything anymore is attached to the network, right? So you got camera systems, you got phone systems, you got everything. Everything is so we have to make sure with our advanced security that we're we're monitoring and making sure there's no malicious activity, uh, and that's always the 
the challenge internally and seeing things that got added to the network and that kind of stuff. So you really have to manage a lot of the, the new stuff that's coming out. So, yeah, just, just to share a quick story. I was recently reading an article of, uh, uh, this, uh, casino that got breached, um, and they got breached because the, uh, the water tank was connected to the network. So they had a, a water tank for their aquarium and it was connected to the network and the attacker was able to breach it. And then that just opened up a ton of different doors for them and essentially compromised the whole casino. Wow. Yeah, the beauty of technology is it informs you of everything. I'm sure the water tank was telling the salt le- you know, salt levels and all the other stuff, that, which is really handy. You don't have to go to the physical machine and test it. Uh, but the downside of that is it wasn't protected. Yeah, you have to segment that piece off of your network to say, hey, that's not part of your business. It's, it is, but it isn't. So you have to segment the traffic and make sure that traffic can't talk to the traffic that's on your business network. So, and that's what we do with a lot of our partners is if somebody wants a security camera, we just, it's fine to be on the network. We just want to make sure that piece does not talk to the business data part of your network. So. Yep. And that's where our business grade firewalls come into play too, because we're able to do that through our firewalls. Yeah. The firewalls and switches. Yeah. That's uh, that's enlightening because, you know, like you said, everything is connected now. Um, you got printers, you got phones, you got anything yeah. in between can be connected to the network. Uh, so that kind of opens you up to some more vulnerabilities that may not be top of mind to everybody. Um, right. We right. To think yep. of our PCs and our laptops, but not so much everything else. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, the security issues that people have, it's not, it's not like they just appear. They're self-induced. You know, people click on stuff. And um, a lot of those type of devices you just mentioned, those smart devices, those are where a lot of the vulnerabilities happen because right. there's nobody really managing them. You know, everything is connected to the internet. You get light bulbs, you get outlets. All right. Nobody's managing that stuff. And, and that's where, you you know, who knows, you know, they, they have weird traffic on them. They talk out to the internet and send information to in weird places. Nobody monitors any of it. So, yeah. But the other thing definitely that's a concern too is, you know, even though a device is still running on your network, it might be 15 years old, right? right? right. right. And yeah. you know, that's a vulnerability in and of itself. Like a 12 yeah. year old server with an out of date operating system, right. patches are not being released for that. So no one can patch it. Yeah, we run into that a lot with manufacturing, you know, making sure we have to segment their, their PLC systems off of the uh, the business side network because, you know, a lot of times those are, those those have just run, right? They have this software that's 15 years old and they run these machines and, you know, which is great. But the, at the end of the day, we have to make sure they're not connected to uh, the business side of the network. So. I got just a couple more questions. Um, okay. I'll hand it over to you guys to wrap up, but. So say someone who isn't actively working with you or another um, you know, MSP provider, what can they do to find out if there's something wrong with their network like right now? Well, that, that's challenging because if they don't, you know, they, they could reach out to any company that provides IT services. They should be able to do some type of assessment and uh, a scan and try to work with them. You know, um, if it's unmanaged, and they have a lot of devices, it's, it definitely is a challenge um, unless you bring in somebody or you have somebody internally uh, looking at that. The problem with internal staff, um, you, you tasking them with that is it, they're usually, you know, if you're an IT or if you're listening to this and you're an IT, usually you come into work because you plan on doing these five things. And by the end of the day, you're like, I didn't accomplish any of those because I got 500 calls from different people and you're staffing, you know, you're basically working on the unpredictability of problems. So that's why that stuff ends up getting neglected. And uh, that's why partners, even with internal IT work with us because they're like, you guys are dedicated to look at this stuff and make sure it's up there while they're dealing with the day-to-day type activities. But with that being said, I, I think, you know, bringing somebody in to do a free network assessment and just to have a business conversation, I think that's going to happen a lot in the future with, uh, like going back to the insurance companies because they're they're coming in with these uh, uh, cyber security documents that say, hey, I need you to fill this out. And, it, and it's forcing them to really sit back and look and say, yeah, we're really not doing most of this stuff. And what does that mean? You know, so and we get it. Most companies just want their IT to work. They could care less how it works. They want to make sure they're protected and they want to grow their business. Right. Um, but and that's another challenge with companies when they have a, they're smaller and they only have one IT person, you know, how do they manage what an IT person should do when they don't even understand the IT aspect of it? So. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. 
Um, and I'll, I'll end with this. I think you guys mentioned earlier, um, you know, how often you should check out your IT strategy. I think you had said every, you know, once a quarter, is that what yep. you want? Yeah, we, we, we do a business review once a quarter and just have a business conversation. This is what we're seeing. This is what's coming down the pipe. Uh, this is your budget that, you know, you got X amount of computers that are old, or this is the equipment that's old budget for it for two years from now. And it kind of takes away the surprises for the customer and they could budget and they could plan. Um, you know, there's nothing worse than you go to a customer and say, Hey, I need you to spend 15 grand on a server that they didn't budget for. And they're like, you know, why didn't you tell me that like last year? So we could plan for it. Right. And, the, and those QBRs where you develop the strategy too, you would ask, you know, we would get input from the, the customer and say, Hey, this is, this is what we're doing with our business. How can you help us as well? And we'd work on developing that strategy as well. And how do we, how do we make the hardware fit what you guys want to do? Right. And a lot of times it's not a, you know, when we walk, especially when we walk into new environments, it's not like you, you it's a flip of a switch. You got to, it takes some time to get them to where they, they need to be. You know, sometimes it's taken them 20 years to create the mess a little bit. And so it's not going to be overnight to, to fix it. And we understand that and they have to budget for it. And so it's just really just having a conversation of where we're at, where we're, where we're heading, where do we want to be? What's the impact? um of downtime what's the impact if we don't do this stuff you know what's the cost if we get breached uh are we covered from a uh, from an insurance company standpoint and that kind of stuff so just a lot of business conversation we're in it but it's it's it's, it's i enjoy the business aspect and sitting down with the customers and understanding um and the solutions are not a one size fit no and it, exactly yeah and it's all depends on the environment right yeah it definitely depends on environments you know some are completely cloud some are not cloud at all i mean they have some cloud services there's hybrid so the beauty of one thing that COVID has provided is is that people are looking at different strategies to say okay what happens if you know, we have another major disaster or what happens if, you know, Susie is sick and she wants to work from home. Can we keep, you know, and, and how can we create these remote offices? So as, as if they're sitting here, so it's really opened up strategies to remote workers um, to be able to, you know, offer uh, a hybrid type approach to the workforce. Gotcha. That's um, an interesting point you made up or you brought up about um, it's not just about your IT. It is often about budgeting and expense. But when you stay actively on top of it, um, you are able to handle situations a lot more um, with more ease rather than being hit with a giant bill all at once. I can, I understand that. You know, I would, yeah. It's like going, going, not going to the dentist for a while. And they're like, oh, you need to get this, this, and this fixed. Oh, right. well, crap. Um, all right. So uh, I, we did just get a question from an audience member, and I'll, I'll read it verbatim. Um, how does our network stay protected when we do business in the cloud? Our devices might be old, but does that matter if we are using the cloud? Well, yeah, it's it's funny because a lot of times people, and, and that's a misnomer in my opinion for the cloud, is everybody thinks you go to the cloud, your headaches go away, your security issues go away. There's a lot of that stuff that goes on. Really, the cloud is just, if you think about it, the cloud is you're no longer housing a, the information in your building, you're housing it somewhere else. So you still need the IT strategy from a layered security for your, your devices that are connecting, right? So, because if, if you get malware on your computer, they're going to start tracking what you're doing. They could, they could key log your passwords. There's a lot, the same breaches still happen, even though your stuff's in the cloud. And I know a lot of times companies will say, well, they're backing up my stuff in the cloud. You just have to understand what they're doing and how they're backing it up. And you also still have to protect yourself from that environment so um and using the older equipment they're not getting their security packs. right and, and the problem with some of the older equipment too is there has been a, a definitely a demand on the tools that you put on the pcs that utilize more processor more memory and then the pcs start running slower and that kind of stuff for boot up to even kept connecting to the internet so you, you still have to have a strategy to upgrade your equipment you know you obviously they depreciate equipment over five years we usually do about a five-year strategy uh, for our partners but that that's that's uh um you you have the exact same i, I would actually answer. add you have an extra step if you're going to the right. cloud because now you need to make sure whatever data you're putting in the cloud is secure so you need to almost analyze the security practices of whoever that cloud provider is right and make sure that they're doing the best you know you don't want to just upload your data to somebody who's storing it on their house and it's just open to the you internet. gotta hope yeah it's, 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 you yeah know, you so can't have blind hope yeah. about blind faith in that type of stuff right. you still have to discuss mm -hmm. the strategy of what that means and 
And uh, so there's, there's definitely a, a good conversation that could be had for, because we have a lot of our partners, I mean, that have applications that run local and applications that run in the cloud. I mean, for us, you know, the concern back in the day was like, oh, they're not going to need IT companies because, you know, uh, it's going in the cloud. I argue that it's actually more work for us because now that's another vendor we have to actually deal with when we're dealing with um, the cloud applications and the issues that go along with that. And there really is a loose term to cloud. And what does cloud mean? Is it truly a cloud application or is it, you know, you're getting into a remote uh, term a session that's just a server sitting somewhere else that, you know, we have that conversation with businesses that they say, Hey, we want to move our stuff to the cloud, but they have to run the application on a physical server. So basically what they want to do is pick up their physical server and move it to a data center. Mm -hmm. And that, and we'll talk to them about that. If that makes sense, we'll, we'll help them in, but a lot of times you're just paying to house your server somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, usually the security issues and the issues you have printing internet connections, uh, viruses, all the stuff that you have that create productivity issues normally does not, uh, does not cause, is not caused by the server itself. You know what I mean? So, um, that's probably the most protected because nobody's on there browsing the internet and doing stuff. So, um, you know, you could have hardware failures and that kind of stuff, but that's the least likely of downtime. And then just to add one more piece to that, since it was a hardware related question, um, whatever terminals that are getting used in order to access those cloud resources would be another big concern. Um, if you're running an outdated operating system and thinking that you can open up a web browser and right. browse out to your software, well, if that, if that one terminal you know, were to become compromised as outdated operating systems do become, um, then essentially what, what you have to think, what, what can happen? So if, if somebody is able to install like a key logger on my station and record everything that I'm typing, all my credentials, um, then it, what, what good was it to put everything in the cloud to begin with if it was just the, the first domino that had to fall due to an outdated operating system. And then the whole company, you know, comes unraveled. Yeah, I, that makes sense. Um, I really don't have anything else to question you guys on. I think you cleared those up pretty well. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here and for the ECMSI team for giving a lot of great info. Um, oh, we yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to say anything in closing before we head out, please do. No, yeah. If you if you have any questions, concerns, we you know Shane, our our, our sales manager, and myself, we come out. It, there's no cost. It's just a business conversation. You know that we know there's other uh, service providers out there. Um, we just want to have a, a a a business conversation. You know, our our stuff is we we're confident in what we do and we believe in what we do. And, you know, our, our contracts are month to month. We're not, we're not tying anybody down. So if it makes sense and you want to have a business talk, a strategy, an IT strategy talk, feel free to write down the number that's on the screen here and, and give us a call and we'll come out and just have a chat. We're not high pressured sales. We, we're very busy. Um, and we, we, we believe in what we do. And, and we uh, don't, we don't, we don't outsource anything. We, everything that we use, we sell here. Yeah. Uh, we, we vet it internally and we deploy it to our clients. So, um, from our project team to our knock to our, um, to security, yeah, to security everybody, team, everybody, everybody everything is housed here in our building and, and we've been growing year after year. Um, and we're adding a lot of new clients. So, yeah. and we have a lot of great partners and we yep. appreciate their, their trust in us and their support with us. And it is a trust relationship. Um, when it, at, the, at the end of the day and you know we're here to build long-term strategies with yep. them so but no I, we do want to thank you um brian for putting this together and uh we're, we're grateful for the for you guys so thank you very much um we appreciate the the awesome info you have even more um this webinar will be available on full replay to anyone who either couldn't attend the full event or check out tuned in maybe halfway through um, we'll have a story and online in the next couple of days so um, go ahead and check that out. And I want to once again thank all the audience. Thank you very much for being here today and get in touch with the team at I or at ECMSI if you need some need some help.